A matrix is in row echelon form if all rows that contain only zeros are at the bottom of the matrix. Also, the leftmost non-zero entry in any row, which we call the pivot, is to the right of every pivot slash non-zero leading entry in the rows above it. Consider this matrix here. Is it in row echelon form? Well, do we have any rows with all zeros? It looks like we have one here. Is it at the bottom of the matrix below all of the other non-zero rows? No. So this matrix is not in row echelon form. What if we switch row 2 and row 4? We get this matrix. Is it in row echelon form? The rows that contain zeros are at the bottom, so we satisfy the first condition. What about this second condition? First, from left to right in each row, where are our first non-zero entries? Well, we have a 3 in the top row, 1 in the second row, and 7 in the third row. As we move down from row to row, are these leading entries, which we call the pivots, to the right of every pivot above them? 1 is to the right of 3, so no issue here. 7 is to the right of 3, but 7 is not to the right of 1. The pivot or leading entry of our third row is not to the right of every pivot or leading entry in the rows above it. This is not in row echelon form because we do not satisfy the second condition. What happens if we swap row 2 and row 3? We get this matrix. Each of our pivots or leading entries, 3, 7, and 1, are to the right of the pivots or leading entries above them. Some people refer to this as the stair-step pattern for the pivot slash first non-zero entries of the rows. This matrix now satisfies our first condition and our second condition, and so this matrix is in row echelon form. Let's move on to some more examples. Take a second now to look at the following five matrices and determine if they are in row echelon form. Please pause if you need to because we are hopping right into classifying them. First, let's focus on our first condition again. All four zero rows must be at the bottom of the matrix. These three matrices have rows of all zeros. Are any of these rows not at the bottom of the matrix? Well, the matrix in the top right corner has a full zero row above a non-zero row, and so it is not in row echelon form. All of our remaining matrices satisfy the first condition, so let's move on to the second condition. Now we look to see if our pivots or non-zero leading entries are to the right of all pivots or non-zero leading entries above them. In the top left matrix, our 5 is to the right of 1, our 9 is to the right of 1 and 5, and so this first matrix satisfies both conditions and is in row echelon form. In the top middle matrix, our 6 is to the right of 5. This matrix satisfies both conditions and is in row echelon form. In the bottom left matrix, the 8 is to the right of 7, and the 3 is to the right of 7 and 8 above it. This matrix satisfies both conditions and so is in row echelon form. Finishing up with the matrix in the bottom right hand side, our 6 is to the right of 7, the 3 is to the right of 6 and 7, but what about this 9 in the bottom row? It is not to the right of any of the leading entries from the rows above it. This matrix fails the second condition, and so this matrix is not in row echelon form. Essentially, to satisfy these two conditions, our matrix cannot have two pivots or leading non-zero entries in any column, so no stacked pivots. Our pivots or leading non-zero entries cannot be to the left of the pivots in the rows above them. And our zero rows cannot be above non-zero rows. If you see any of these within your matrix, you know it's not in row echelon form. I'm Joe, and thanks for spending some time with me.